started a home-based service business and you have found that running a business is harder than it looks and more overwhelming than you ever thought it would be. This podcast is the best of the best information that I've learned to help grow and sustain my business. Listen, subscribe, and follow along. We can avoid the overwhelm and start creating a business we love to run. This episode is brought to you by my bookkeeping strategy sessions. If you're stuck and don't know how to tackle your massive bookkeeping problem that's keeping you up at night, I can help. We can create an actionable, manageable plan for you to catch up with your books and how to not fall behind again. To book one of these limited sessions, email me at lydia at dacbalance.com to be sure that we are a good fit to work together. Now on with the show. So you're behind in QuickBooks. If you have been running a business, you may have set up a QuickBooks online account because you've heard that's just what you're supposed to do to keep up with your bookkeeping for taxes. Or you may have never set up a a QuickBooks account and are not checking your numbers at all. And if you've set up a QuickBooks account, the more you start looking at QuickBooks, the more you may have realized that it's not as straightforward as you thought it would be. And there are no step-by-step instructions on what you're supposed to be doing each month. And this probably has led to the feeling of being behind because, well, you don't know what to do to catch up. Anytime that I have felt behind in something, I've also felt embarrassed, especially the longer that I've had a business and not known how to do something. I have felt a lot of shame because you'd think by now I know how to do things, but I still don't know how to do it all. And I felt a lot of um, just embarrassment by that. And so maybe you're a perfectionist and you're in QuickBooks all the time and it never looks good enough for you or finished and you're always trying something new and you're never feeling like you have it all together. Well, in today's episode, I first want to talk about how do you know if you're behind and most importantly, how to get caught up in different aspects of QuickBooks. So how do you know if you're behind? The most important thing that you can do in QuickBooks to stay on track for your monthly financial statements and taxes is to reconcile your bank account. If you grew up with a checkbook, then you probably did this each month where you balanced out your checkbook to make sure that everything was recorded. Well, it's literally the same idea. If you're not familiar with this or Um, If you never had a checkbook, if you always had a debit card, reconciling is simply taking your bank statement and in the reconcile feature in QuickBooks, making sure that all of the income and expenses line by line are recorded and that everything balances out to zero. And once you've done that, you can easily find if there's a duplicate income or an expense that's duplicated that needs to be voided or if you forgot something altogether. And this makes sure that you have a complete picture of what's going on in your business. Because if you are running your numbers or your financial statements and you've actually left out a lot of expenses, your profit's going to be higher than what it should be. Or if you've duplicated a lot of your income, it's going to look like you owe a ton more money in taxes because you've duplicated your income for the year. And your CPA is going to tell you that you owe this huge tax bill and you think there's just no way that I made that much money. So this is the most important thing that you can do to make sure that everything is recorded in QuickBooks. So you are behind in QuickBooks if you have never once reconciled your bank statement before or if you haven't reconciled in several months. And the way to get caught up with that is you need to go back and you need to download or find the paper copies of all of your bank statements, go to the reconcile tab and find the last date that your books were reconciled. And then you take your bank statement, you enter in your ending balance and you go from there and you just check it off in QuickBooks and you um, compare that against your bank statement to make sure that everything is there. So for your income, if you have been producing invoices for your clients in Excel or another program besides QuickBooks and you're not going back into QuickBooks and and entering the data or you're just clumping it into general revenue, like revenue for May, revenue for April, and you're not breaking it down into specific um, categories of what people bought, then I would say that you're behind. 
Having your revenue broken down specifically to what a customer bought is extremely important when you're looking at profitability of certain items. If you don't have good data in the first place, you'll never be able to make good decisions and you'll never know if a certain, let's say a product is profitable or if a certain service that you're offering is profitable because it could mean that your business overall is profitable, but what about it's profitable? Like what program is most profitable or what aspect of your coaching is most profitable? If you don't have everything broken down to see the expenses associated with each of them, you'll really not have a good idea of the best way to move forward in your business for more profitability. So to get caught up with this, you do need to go back as far as you can or want to and enter in those details. It may mean that you go back to January 1st of this year and start from there, or you may decide to start from June 1st of this year. Now, I wouldn't recommend, if you've been in business for five years, I don't know that I would recommend going back five years and doing this because that is gonna take a lot of time unless you're planning on hiring that out. That is gonna take a lot of time and a lot of your energy and while it might be helpful, what's probably most important is what you're doing right now because your business has probably changed in the last several years. So I would say if in January 1st of this year, you're still doing the exact same programs and things, I would say at least go back to January 1st and to find out what you're doing. But let's say that you're changing up your business. I would say start from June 1st. If you're adding in new items this summer or if you're um, trying something new, I would say start from June 1st so that you can figure out going forward what's profitable and what is not. Okay, so for your expenses as well as your income, if you have never double checked your work, then I would say that you are behind. So when all of your transactions are dumped into QuickBooks Online from your bank account, it doesn't know why you purchase things. And if you're only just accepting the transactions because, oh yeah, that matches my bank statement, that matches my bank statement, and it's putting everything in uncategorized or just a general expense or one of those lines, then you need to go back and make sure that all of your expenses are categorized correctly and that they're all broken down very, very specifically to what they are. I would say that you're behind if you have never done this and you really don't have accurate financial statements to look at because it's just all jumbled up. And to get caught up, you do need to comb through and verify that everything is in its correct category in your chart of accounts. And if you're not familiar with the chart of accounts, it's basically a listing of all of your, for a profit and loss, it's all of your income and all of your expenses. So it's literally a list that if it's set up correctly, it'll have all the ways that you make money in your business, whether you sell a product or you sell a service or you sell a service or you have a group coaching program or if you um, are doing affiliate programs whatever thing it is it needs to be really specifically broken down and for your expenses I like to get even more detailed than that and so even instead of putting subscriptions on there I like to say Dropbox subscription or WordPress subscription or any of those things that are really specific so that when you do look at your financial statements, you'll be able to pick out things really quickly and say, oh wow, I spent that much on Dropbox or oh, I spent that much on Adobe this year. And so that you can really see through your financial statements what you're spending your money on and you'll know where to cut back. Or if things are important to you, you can say next year, I want to budget twice as much in this category because this helps me in my business a lot. And this is going to help drive more profitability and make things easier on the back end so that I can do more work. And so that is all based on your chart of accounts. You have to set that up separately. Um, I can help you set that up for sure. Um, But that is something that you do need to work on the back end to get all of that set up so that you have good, accurate reports. So those are just a few ways that you could be behind in QuickBooks and some solutions on what to do to get caught up. Now, if someone right now were to go through my website and look at it and tell me all the things that I'm behind on, I would be very, very overwhelmed. And honestly, I would probably just avoid dealing with it. But the longer that you let QuickBooks stay a mess, the harder it is to catch up. And I want to help you. 
At the beginning of the episode, I talked about my one hour strategy sessions. And if something in this episode made you wonder if you're doing something correctly, or you don't just don't know how to navigate the program, or if you know that you've never done any of this before, or if you're brand new to QuickBooks and you just need a little bit of guidance, I can help you get caught up and know what to do. So during the hour long call, we will walk through the specific problems that you're having and I will show you the solutions and you'll get to ask questions and I'll give you the answers to it. And I'll even send you a video of your session so that you have the training whenever you need it so that you can refer back to it. These hours are very, very tactical and my goal is for you to walk away knowing exactly what to do and with the confidence that you can do them. If you know that you're behind and you just want to outsource this to someone else, (laughs) feel free to contact me. I don't personally do catch up work in QuickBooks, but I do know a plethora of virtual bookkeeper contacts that I can refer you to who would be happy to help you um, get caught up and they would love to work with you. Once you have your numbers, we can get together again to talk about what it all means, your profit margins, how you can make better decisions in your business once you know your numbers, and just how you can drive your business forward better once you have really good information. I would be honored to work with you. To get started, email me at lydia at dacbalance.com with the problem that you're having, and we can discuss the best way to get to a solution. Next week, I will be sharing an episode titled What to Do When You're Done Reconciling. So we talked about reconciling your books a few minutes ago. If you're still confused on that, definitely send me a message um, so that we can get um, a session booked because you really need to do that. Um, And then if you know what to do and you're done reconciling, you're thinking what next? Well, next week, next week's episode is for you. If you are ready to use your numbers to help your business, please subscribe so that you'll be notified when the episodes drop. I would love to connect with you. You can find me on Instagram at lydia.miller.mba and always by email at lydia at dacbalance.com. So until next time, go and make it happen. 